before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by me and I am looking for your help, your advice on how to sleep well. Tell me in the comments your best sleeping methods because I have not slept well in fucking weeks. And before we know it, I'm going to be an old man and uh, maybe the bags will grow under my eyes one day and that's just, you know, it. life's over. When you, when you start looking old, it's fucked. You may as well just cry not do anything with your life because what's the point but the real reason you're here is to listen to me talk about 10 gems that you discovered in 2020 2020 albums that i asked you to point to me to me i was asking you you guys on twitter i tweeted about it asking you guys what are some of the most undiscovered gems of the year I got way more responses than I thought, and my god, you guys are bloody good at finding music. Seriously, I was I was impressed. I'm glad I've managed to, I guess, uh, develop a relationship with people that watch me, and they know that I talk about all kinds of music on this channel, because the diverse range of genres that were mentioned in the replies was insane. It ranged from, like, hip-hop, it's a uh, pl uh, plunder, uh, plunder, uh, plunder, uh, plunder phonics uh, to bloody uh, uh, metal music to ambient stuff, house, electronic, like it just ranged. It, the, the, it went on. And instead of doing individual videos for each one, because I haven't got enough time to do that, and honestly, be with them being lesser known releases, they tend to not get many views, so I thought, why not pile them all together in a list video? Because that's more exciting to do a list video and give you 10 of the most interesting ones that I heard. And hopefully, they're going to be some of your favourites of the year if you check them out. So let's start with Neurature. We may as well get into the list with this first pick here. Neurature. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but they are a metal band. Uh, you can find this album on Bandcamp, and I think you can find it on uh, streaming services as well. I'm pretty sure I got it on Apple Music. Definitely one of the more interesting releases of the metal genre I've heard in 2020. When I hear albums like this, I'm always reminded that I don't listen to enough of this genre, and this vocalist, I think, is a really, really powerful singer. In fact, a lot of the songs were actually carried by this guy, I think. Uh, the instrumentals weren't bad at all, by the way, but I think there just needs to be a slight refinement with this uh, sound and this band and uh, you know with the next release they could honestly be one of the most exciting bands around so definitely check this out. Yeah, Sam Avni with a really cool minimal techno release here. You guys know I'm really big on this kind of stuff on this channel. Techno, house and even minimal techno. Um, usually minimal techno is one of the lesser ones for me personally because I think uh, there's sometimes just uh, a, a lack of identity sometimes, a little bit sometimes, yeah, a little bit. This album ends up having tracks that follow very similar patterns, but there are some really great moments on this album. Like when you have a track that hits a great build, it gets so exciting. And there are a few moments like that on here. And um, I, I'm impressed, it's good. Blood and Sun is next. Uh, shout out to Mike Seatown. He didn't recommend this to me, but I sent him a message and was like, hey Mike, you're gonna love this because this is Neo Folk. And he responded with the biggest flex you can, you can do. The, the biggest flex you can respond with is take a photo with you holding the vinyl record in your hand. That, that was a flex. Seriously, man, Mike flexed me there. So of course, I may as well make the obvious comparison since I brought up Mike. Uh, we did collaborate this year with the Rome album, which is of course in the same genre. So if you did check that album out and you liked it, and you did, you know, you have checked out Neo Folk in the past, and you like the genre, then this is another one to add to your list because it's pretty damn good. Next, we'll move on to some pretty standard hip hop type stuff, not the most innovative style of hip-hop you've ever heard but ill scholars did drop a pretty cool album this year definitely something that i think you know given a few more years if they just refine what they're going for they could be really cool just maybe get a bit more creative with the beats um but the rapping i think is there i mean the the main guy who raps uh reminded me of odyssey so if you're a fan of anything odyssey has done over the past few years and I think you'd like this as well, if you, especially if you're like a bit of an old schooler when it comes to hip hop, because this is straight out of the 90s, honestly. I want to mention one of the most interesting albums that was sent my way doing this, uh, Phoenix Brown. Now, this album here, 
The best way I can describe it is like plunder phonics combined with punk music. And uh, uh, look, if I leave it at that, I think that would imp <laughs> that would intrigue you uh, very much. The way some of the tracks were like manipulated and twisted and you know done in a very particularly plunder phonics way just really sounded cool as hell. Like I wasn't totally amazed by every song, especially towards the end. I did think it started to peter off a little bit. But like the first few tracks, I was like, holy shit, this is really impressive. And whoever is masterminding this is onto something. Like it's really onto something. This could be a really cool idea if you take it a step further in the future. Now this is a name that I have seen floating around a little bit. Kevin and the Bikes, they, I think it's a band. They put out the album last year, Dork Call 101. It, it looked like a bit of a meme album, to be honest. It was about two hours long. I never got around to it, but people did mention it to me actually a few times. Uh, so I think it probably is worth trying, even if the length does sound a bit unappealing. This one was certainly more appealing to me though, uh, and probably more so for a lot of general music listeners because it was only 30 minutes <laughs> and also it was readily available on streaming, unlike their previous stuff. So I was straight in there listening to this definitely got a car seat headrest vibe from it as well. In fact, I've mentioned this album to a few people and they've said that as well. So I think it's pretty noticeable, but I do like the sort of indie vibes that this album gives. Some of the tracks are really, really uh, on point. And I think this, this, this artist, I think could be a big breakthrough. I sort of feel it. I feel like they've got a name that's pretty recognizable. They've got a growing fan base. It's very steadily growing. I don't know. I think Kevin and the Bikes could be something big in a few years, but we'll see. Definitely check it out, though. Um, I think if you're an indie rock fan, a lo-fi indie rock fan, you're going to be all over this. Daka Braka next, a Ukrainian folk band that... Um, is really just reminding me that this year I've not been quite as good at finding those, uh, you know, non, uh, I guess, non-English centric type bands. Like I've always tried doing my best to find non-Western music. Uh, there are these kinds of strange little oddities that pop up every now and then. And I'm really glad someone put this on to me because it just is totally something I would like regardless um uh, of when i hear it some really intense tracks i wish every track went like this it reminded me of what ifrakia electric did on their last album which came out last year which was fantastic i did review it as well they're from different countries by the way and they're doing different styles but it was just the way the vocals were just so enchanting and the instrumental was so chaotic that I was just wowed by tracks like Lado or Lado, if that's how you pronounce it, like seriously, were insane. Not every track went with that though. Some of them focused a bit more on the harmonies and the softer vocals, but when they go at it on the harder tracks, it's insane. I want a full album of tracks like this and I might have to check their older albums too because they've been at it for like 15 years apparently. So yeah. Gonna have to try out more of their stuff. Certainly want to mention Bobbing next with Mixtape. Um, this is 23 minutes, by the way. If you've not got 23 minutes in your day to try this, um, I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for you. I, I feel very sorry for you. I think this is probably out of all of them, the coolest blend of ideas. Like at points it feels quite math rocky, but then it's also got this electronic blend to it. I'm not sure if a lot of it has been sampled or anything like that, but I think if you're a big fan of like sample heavy music, that just flows seamlessly um, from start to finish and uh, is very creative, goes in different directions and you're just gonna be all over this, honestly. Definitely one of the coolest uh, discoveries out of everything here. And I just wanna see where this artist goes next because I think what they're doing again is just really interesting and um, I hope that they keep up what they're doing. I'm gonna have to find some of these artists as well on social media because um, I need to keep up with them. I, I don't want to lose track of these 10 artists here over time because they're probably going to keep putting out really good music and uh, I, I want to I see where they go. Angelica Garcia next, who goes to a slightly Latin-flavoured type album here. Um, definitely got the influences from 
that Latin uh, heritage. Also does it in like a Santi Gold type way. I know it's a bit of an old name now. She's not exactly a prominent name in music anymore, but she always had this like artsy pop approach to what she did, uh, threw in bits of indie rock as well, lots of other kind of cool things. And Angelica Garcia here is doing that as well. Just a really nice, catchy release. Probably one of the most accessible ones out of these picks I've given you here, by the way. So I guess um, this would be a good one to go with if you're a bit unsure about the other ones because I described them in, in a way that didn't sound appealing. But I think Angelica Garcia would tick off some of the boxes for you that you're looking for in 2020. Finally, for my pick of the 10 gems that you guys discovered, uh, we've got something that I think might have been one of the best here of all the ones that I listened to, False Noise, with this really cool atmospheric drum and bass jungly release that, uh, of course, has been appealing to me most in 2020. Anything of the electronic genre, drum and bass, house, techno, all that kind of stuff. It's been hitting the spot, and uh, this album here is certainly no stranger to uh, to this style for me. It's done extremely well. There, again, is this kind of like uh, night element to it. It just feels very dark and very gloomy at points, but it's got a great atmosphere to it. And um, I think, again, if you're a fan of drum and bass, there's no reason why you couldn't check this out and enjoy it. And I'll leave it there. I didn't go into a huge amount of detail with every single release I mentioned, but I thought if I just give a little overview of each one, uh, maybe you guys would check them out. Uh, you don't have to, but it'd be cool if you did, because you might find something you love. And of course, thank you to anyone that did reply to me on Twitter. I have tried listening to almost everything that was in that thread. I couldn't talk about every release here. There are some of them that I do want to keep listening to, though, because some of them actually are really, really quite good. And I'm wondering, maybe should I do a video on them, a separate one? I don't know, we shall see. But thank you nevertheless for replying. Uh, apologies for not mentioning the one you might have mentioned in that Twitter thread in this video. Doesn't mean that I don't like it. It just might mean I haven't got around to it yet or I didn't have a huge amount to say about it for this particular video. But again, thank you for getting involved with this. Um, uh, so, uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, follow me there so you get tweets like this and maybe one day you could recommend something great to me. I do a video on it and there you are. You've you've inspired someone to uh, go out their way to review an album and they might even love it. So go follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on these albums if you've heard them in the comments. Check any of them out that you haven't already. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ooh, and goodbye.